The uh, next section is uh, Sam I Am. We're going to be talking about the Windows SAM file and uh, local passwords. First of all, if we've talked about uh, the Windows SAM file, we're talking about two types of uh, hashes that are generally stored. The first and the simple and the old fashioned one are the LN hashes. Thanks, guys, that was great. I'll get the video up uh, sometime next week, most likely. Okay. Assuming my video equipment doesn't crap out on me. Alright, uh, Land Manager, basically, does anybody ever actually use Land Manager back in the day? Sure. See, I never did. Uh, Land Manager was basically uh, the answer to uh, Novell Netware back in the days when it ran on top of DOS. We're talking pre NT. But they implement a lot of the same stuff inside of Windows. Uh, the LM hash, and maybe I'm getting this all wrong, but that, that, the LM hash is how it stored passwords. An LM hash is incredibly weak as far as the hashing algorithm is concerned. It's unsalted. And to explain what salt means, essentially a salt is an extra bit you put in there, extra bit of a... Um, I'm trying to figure out how to put it. Noise. It, noise, yes, or entropy. Basically, you put the salt in there so that if someone has a different salt, the same password will come out to an entirely different hash. That stops pre-computation attacks. For instance, the password password is the same in an LM hash or an NTLM hash, no matter whose account it is. However, in, let's say, Linux, where they use a salt, well, that salt is somehow added in with that password, then hashed. If the salt's different, the resulting hash is different. So if you were to do a, uh, an attack, like a rainbow attack, you'd have to compute that rainbow table for every possible hat, yeah, every possible salt. Let's say it's a four byte salt, that gets huge quick, even for just a four byte salt. But uh, LM hashes are fairly simple. First of all, everything is converted to all of a case. That's one thing that makes it simpler. Uh, then they pad out the plain text with uh, null characters to make it 14 bytes long. So your maximum password is 14 bytes long. The last part's all nulls. Uh, then you split it into two 7-byte chunks. By the way, because of the mathematics of this, technically what you're doing is you're cracking two 7-byte passwords. The uh, physics of that, the mathematics behind that, it's far, far faster to crack two 7-byte passwords than it is one 14-byte password. Because once you get through the first 7, well, you just get to the next 7. Essentially, you're just cracking two 7-byte passwords, which becomes a lot simpler. Or, since they, it's null padded, it's possible if you have like a 9-character password, what you're really doing is cracking one 2-character password and one 7-character password. Ah, crap. Ah. <laughs> Preview. Did you hit the end key? Yeah, apparently. Alright. Also, these 7 characters are then used to uh, DES encrypt a known value. That known value, if you're really curious, is KGS, la da da la da da cartoon cuss word. Uh, <laughs> then it concatenates the two back together and stores it as a hash. Well, since it's split into two 7-byte chunks, this makes it incredibly easy to crack, because basically you can crack them separately. It just makes life so... It just easy to crack. Now, luckily, you can turn this off, and in Vista and Newer, there is no LM hash. Uh, there's a hash you'll see in there, but basically it represents an empty hash, which you'll see here in a bit. Another hash that's stored in the SAM file is the NT Manager hash, the NTLM hash. Uh, essentially, what it is, is the Unicode password, so you, have, you can have other weird symbols in it as well, uppercase and lowercase, and it's MD4 hashed, and then stored. Now, it looks like it's simpler. The MD4 algorithm actually makes it much more complicated, but regardless, the MD4 hashing algorithm, while not as good as some modern hashing algorithms, is still a damn sight better than an LM hash. Uh, there's also, and it also, again, it's not salted. So, one person's NTLM uh, hash is the same as someone else's NTLM hash, as long as it's the same password. Now, uh, cache credentials are different. Those are salted with people's username as a salt. Not a great salt since it's so predictable, but well, we'll get to that in a, in a second. Um, there's several different ways people can dump a, a SAM database and pull out all the hashes. Now, back in the day, you used to be able to just grab the SAM file and pull the hashes out directly. Around NT4, I want to say Service Pack 4, they used something called SysKey, which adds an extra level of encryption. 
But the thing is, unless you start out on disk, you can just pull the syskey out of the system hive in the registry and use it. Now, there's ways you can store your syskey on an external disk or type it in, but and actually even up to Windows 7, if you type in syskey, you should be able to go in there and set that option. But the last time I tried this, and I probably tried it last on like Windows Vista, Siski is still expecting you to use a floppy disk. And if you don't have a floppy disk, it doesn't let you do it. And how many people now have a system that doesn't actually have a floppy disk? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, it's a problem. But, I mean, if you, if you go that far, I think they're relying on full hard drive encryption to take care of that problem instead of using a different way of implementing Siski. But Siski's still out there, which is why we have to grab both the SAM and the system file, as I showed you before with the boot CDs. Um, Kane's really good for dumping SAM files. Uh, there's a bunch of other tools as well. SAM dump 2, which you saw earlier. Remember how we pointed it to both the SAM and the system file? We could have took that output and loaded it into a bunch of different tools. That output put it in something called PW dump format. Uh, FG dump is like a current uh, version of that from the Fufus group. Uh, you can take that output and there's all sorts of cracking tools that would accept that in and understand it and crack it. Um, you have to massage it a bit for hash crack, which I'll demonstrate here in a bit. Uh, backtrack for a DVD, it has that SAM dump tool on it, so you can use that if you wish. Now, if you were to um, dump stuff from the uh, SAM file using backtrack, essentially, here's the series of commands you'd use. No need to write these down, these slides will be out there, I promise you. Unless my hard drive crashes, in which case this is lost forever. Actually, I got copies of this all over the place, so it's going to be out there. Uh, and this is also something I showed earlier in the class where I dumped the SAM file. Everybody remember it? Essentially, I'm just finding what disk out there is, uh, with FDisk is probably going to be my uh, NTFS partition. I mount it. Well, I make a directory to mount it in. I go ahead and mount it. I use the force just in case it was mounted uncleanly uh, or dismounted uncleanly last time. I use SAM dump 2. And unfortunately, that's supposed to be one line, but it's so long, it's, it kind of goes together. This is all one line. I point to the system hive so that I can extract a key out of it, the syskey, and then I point to the SAM file so it can then pull the passive hashes. And then I pump it into hashes.txt so I can use that in something else. Instead, I'm just going to use Kane because I'm incredibly lazy. Now, Kane has a bunch of ways you can do this. Uh, if I was to uh, bring up um, this, let's see... So I'll insert, oh, I don't want to log into that one. I want to log into dot slash some user and uh, bad pass. By the way, yes, this is on the network. Please don't screw with it. This class will take a lot longer <laughs> if people were attacking the speaker during the t process. All right, um, now I just gave people ideas. All right, there's several ways you can use Kane to dump the passwords. If you're actually running as that particular account right dead in there, what you can do is um, just go into Cracker, and I already dumped them from the previous times. I'm just going to right click on all these and say we move. This should be more or less the virgin uh, setup. I'm going to remove all. Yes. Now I'm going to go here to uh, LM and NTLM hashes. And if I want to, when I can just click this little plus symbol and tell it to dump from the local database. However, if I wanted to load up that uh, LM hash, that uh, sorry, that uh, password dump formatted file from before, I can use this option. Right now, I'm just going to import from the local running machine, and I think it does some kind of DLL insertion attack to actually pull out those hashes. By the way, you'll notice that all these first LM hashes are exactly the same. The reason being is this is a Windows 7 box. So by default, LM hash storage is turned off. If you have the LM hashes, choose the cracked LM hashes. It's much, much quicker than the NTLM hashes. But notice the NTLM hashes, uh, test and administrator are the exact same one, but that's because both of them are the same password. I don't remember what I said it to at this point. But I used the exact same password for both of them, which is why they hashed out the exact same thing. There's no salt. I could, at this point, go ahead and crack this, but I'm going to show an alternate way to grab the hashes. This is assuming you're not an admin and they haven't dumped it from Linux. Let's say you used um, 
my uh, one of my other boot CDs, another boot CD for Windows, to, to copy off the sand in the system hive. What you can do is, I'm going to clear these out, click, click top, shift held down, right click, remove, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and say import, and I'm going to point it at a SAM and system hive that I copied off of a box. You can copy it off even by using a boot CD, pull the hard drive out of the machine, take it to another machine you do control, and copy them off. And I showed the file path to that much earlier on, the uh, C Windows System32 config directory. Just grab them right out of there. And if everybody wants to play with this, I actually, on that uh, zip file I had everybody download, wherever you saved it, inside that zip file, after you uh, unzip it, you should see something called Win7 config folder. I already copied them out for you, if you actually want to by hand go through and play with this. It points, asks you to point to the uh, SAM file. Well, there's my SAM file, and now it wants to know the boot key. This is the sys key it's asking for. I can point this at my system hive, same place, and essentially, I just have to uh, copy it, paste it right here, and now, in theory, it can pull the hashes straight out of those uh, hive keys I copied off. Now, I've chosen some bad passwords. But I want to be able to crack these fast because this is a classroom environment. This isn't going to be 100% realistic, but we don't want to take forever doing this. Let me show you some stuff that's inside the cane directory. Uh, if you go out to C, Program Files, Kane, all the Kane files are in there. Uh, inside of Word Lists, there's some default Word Lists that come with Kane. Ah, crap. Uh, by the way, while I'm in this directly, let me show you something else. You see these files that end with the LST extension? Let me sort by uh, type. These ones that come with the LST extension, these are basically things that have been dumped previously or paths that have been cracked previously. Basically, they're saved states. If I was to open one up, it would, uh, well, let me open up like, uh, let's see if I can find one that has something in it. I don't remember what's in dict.list. Uh, yeah, that's just a save file for, I think, the last uh, password thing I, I loaded up. Let me see if there's a different one. Install. I may have to run something before it actually give me anything, but... Basically, these are places where it actually dumps the hashes too. So if you want to dump with, uh, and I'll show this in a bit, if you want to dump with Kane and crack with something else, you can. Hashcat, to my knowledge at least, doesn't have any dumpers built in. But it is faster for cracking. So you use Kane to dump it, and then Hashcat to actually crack it. But let's go into the word list. Inside of word list, I actually added something. I added it further down the list um, in alphabetical order. But... Um, I had to add it. I'm using bad pass as my example of a bad password. This is not actually in Kane's default dictionary. I've added it myself just so we can actually do the crack. And I added it down here in more or less alphabetical order. If you want this actually to work on your machine, you'll have to add bad pass to your dictionary. I should have chose one that was already in the dictionary, but when I was setting up the demos for this, I didn't think about actually doing that. Let's go ahead and try to crack that. Let's uh, choose, and we can do all sorts of different attacks. If you have remote tables loaded up, you can choose those. You also have the option you see on all these different cracking ways of doing LM hashes or NTLM hashes. You can also do challenge response if you uh, sniff something off the wire, but that's something you may want to cover in a future sniffing class instead. I can't do the LM hash cracking because I don't have the LM hashes. This is a Windows 7 box, so it only has the NTLM hashes. Uh, brute force attack, this is essentially where it goes through and tries all the different character combinations. If I was to bring that up, you can actually go in there. It shows you the key space, like the total number of combinations. You can choose what character sets you want to go through, minimum and maximum password length, and so forth. That takes forever. I'm going to do a dictionary attack. Now, to do a dictionary attack, you just go to dictionary attack, I've highlighted all the uh, all the accounts as you can see. I'm gonna do NTLM hashes. Now, if you've ran this before previously, which I have, you may have to go up to your word list, right-click on it. You can add more lists if you want to. I'm gonna say reset to initial file position. 